So when a lot of people are thinking about what it takes to be a bartender, as you've heard in some of my other videos, it's not necessarily knowing a bunch of drinks. You need to understand that you're going to work in a business and that you are an asset, hopefully, to that business. So if you can understand that your job is to be an asset to that business and not to just make drinks, then you can, you can number one, get more confident in that this is more of a people person skill. Bartending is very much more a skill set about interacting and being sociable with people and basically just facilitating a good time for them. Okay, so what we're gonna do is give you basically a plan. I'm gonna give you a plan of attack of how to create a list, how to approach it, how to set up interviews, close interviews, and hopefully get the job over this entire series. This first episode of this little mini series is basically about creating a plan of attack and giving you a list of places that you can go out and apply to. Now, this is a plan that you have to implement for it to work. Just knowing this information isn't gonna do you any good, but if you do do what I'm gonna show you over this series, if you will greatly improve the likelihood that you will find a job. And when we're first starting out, we can't be too picky, right? Don't, don't be too picky about where you're initially starting because we just need to get that first gig. And then once, you're, once you get started and you have that first job, you stand on that and then you continue to work this system and you kind of just move up the chain until you get to a place that you really want to be at. A lot of this cool stuff that I'm going to show you, you might be able to get hired at a really cool place right off the bat. But initially we can't be too picky, we can't be too finicky. I know in our culture these days we want to just jump right in at the top level but it's, it's important that understand that sometimes you're gonna have to pay your dues. So now let's, let's talk about finding our list of places that we wanna go. And this right here is a big step. This is something that most people don't think about. And if you do, is something that most of your competition, I guarantee, is not doing. This is a way to take the first step in front of your competition right here. The first thing you wanna do is start just kinda in a geographical 30 minute radius around your house. And depending on where you live, you might need to expand that a little bit. You can track that a little bit. And this also is just optimal because then you're hopefully never more than, you know, 30 or 40 minutes away from your job at the most, because that's one of the great things about being a bartender is there's so many places all over the places, you know, it sucks to hopefully you're not having to commute two hours or an hour each way to work. So we want to find a list of at least 30 different establishments that we can go drop off applications and resumes and start to create a relationship with hopefully a manager or an owner at a specific establishment. And if you can't find at least 30 or hopefully 40 or 50 different establishments within that 30 minute radius, then push it out a little bit. Type in different keywords followed by your zip code. So you could type dive bars, zip code, restaurants, zip code, all this, this list I'm going to show you, hotels, casinos, blah, 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 clubs, and your zip code. And then what it'll do, it'll bring up a whole list and you can add those to your little attack sheet. So what are the best types of bars to work at? I've already have another video. I'll leave a little card, a link to the other video I've already shot about the best types of bars to work at. So I won't go into that now. Essentially, we just want some place that's consistent, right? It doesn't have to be the hugest nightclub, you know, like a, it doesn't have to be some banging Las Vegas pool bar in order for you to have a successful career as a bartender. In fact, some of the more low key, under the radar type spots are, in my opinion, preferable as terms, in terms of the types of bars you wanna work at. Like me, I had a stint where I worked at a really busy, quote unquote, nightclub type place, and I, it's not my style, because you're there so late, you have to be like a vampire. I mean, there was a few nights, there was many nights, where I saw first light when I was leaving, you know, cause we'd stay up until two and then it would take us two to two and a half hours to clean and close the place. So you're leaving, you're talking four five in the morning. So at five, five thirty in the summertime, you're, you got light coming in and it's just the way I am personally, the way I live my life, it's, it doesn't fit in my lifestyle. So I def actually prefer places like restaurant style bars because it's the business is earlier. So this will just depend on your personal preference, but we're, we're going on a tangent here. So just, just remember that explore all these different types of establishments that I'm gonna give you and take the first one you can get, stand on it, and then continue to research and look at the other places and then climb up the chain. 
So let me give you a, a specific list of actually the different types of bars that you can look up in Yelp or just maybe get you thinking that you know of places that might fit the bill in your area. First one is just a basic dive bar. Just kind of a hole in the wall that usually don't have a whole lot more than cheap drink specials and pool tables and dart boards kind of a place. Dive bars are great though because they generally have a, a consistent steady business of locals. Pretty much all of those places will have one or two nights a week where they do just ridiculous, you know, dollar draft beers or two dollar you call us or something just stupid. And so there's that, the traveling circuit of varsity drinkers that goes out every night of the week, they'll land in that place, you know, a few nights a week and it'll just be packed. Next is my personal favorite, restaurant bars. And the reason I like restaurant bars is that the food built in is good. It, it helps basically build a consistent, steady business. It helps you feed people so they don't get quite so rowdy and wasted as fast. And like I said, it's just earlier hours. The other good thing about restaurants is that there's a lot of opportunities to start in other positions below bartending and then move up into them. The thing with like just dedicated bars, you know, dive bars or clubs or anything is there's a very limited amount of jobs that are on offer in that establishment if you are trying to get hired in at another position and then move up to bartending. You know, like a club, you got like, you got like bouncers, you got the barbacks and the bartenders and you know, cocktail waitresses and that, that's basically it. But like in a restaurant, you have hostesses and busboys and, and bouncers and dishwashers and cooks and prep cooks and shift managers and servers. So there's a bunch of, there's, there's a wider variety and also a lower easy entry, no experience required entry jobs in restaurants. And then once you get into a place, doesn't matter what job you're doing, as long as you can show the management that you understand how you can be an asset to the establishment as a bartender and that you know some of your and that you know your stuff because you're a bartending pro viewer then you will definitely present yourself as the cream of the crop and it won't be long before you get an opportunity to move up okay the next one is hotel bars this can be just real basic one-off mom pop kind of bed and breakfast places or this can be big corporate hyatts and weston and any any sort of hotel and the thing with these is that they're, they tend to be very corporate. So you can kind of go in or start talking to a manager and, and these, these hotels, they kind of have hiring seasons, right? So they'll, they'll hire for one or two months out of the year through the season and then they'll usually keep that staff for the, for the year, you know, or for the, the season, you know, if they're somewhere that's kind of a seasonal place, like if you're in a ski town or if you're, um, I don't know, ski town's the best example I got, but, they'll staff up for the season and they'll only hire during a certain period of time. However, that doesn't mean that that bar isn't open year round. So if you're a local in that area, either don't get discouraged that they are saying that they only hire during a certain time and don't let them give you, a pre give you the impression that they are representing the entire chain of Hyatt's, right? So if you go, just for example, Hyatt, I don't know why that's just the first one that's coming to my head. If you go into a Hyatt and the guy's like, well, we only hire during this time of the year and, and you know, none of the Hyatt's are hiring. And they'll, you'll kind of get that impression that like none of them are hiring. So even if this guy says we're not hiring, nobody's hiring, still go talk to this other dude over here. Hotels are a great place to start also because they, their bars can be a little more mellow. So they tend to have a lower experience requirement, if at all. So it's also an easy entry point if you're newer to the industry. Next good one for little to no experience is banquet and catering companies. So these are, you just basically, you'll have to look them up in your area, you know, type in whatever your name of your town is, banquet and catering staffing. And you can go in and you can apply and what they'll do is you give them av your availability and then as they have gigs that come up, they call you like, hey, we have, they're kind of last minute or the, you know, that's not like a super consistent gig, but if you match the time, your, if your schedule freedom matches the time of when the, the party is, then they'll call you and you, you know, you go in and, and you work. It, again, it's just an easy entry point job. So you don't, you don't have to have a lot of experience. So the next one is resorts. So this, this little bit different than hotels. I mean, you could kind of consider them sort of the same thing, but think like a four seasons. Um, you know, or I don't know any other, but that kind of a high-end, more resort, sprawling grounds that they have. It's, it's not just a hotel, right? They might have like a golf course on there or something. And 
they tend to have pretty nicely well-stocked bars with nice expensive stuff, which is good because if people come in and they're buying expensive shit, the tab goes up and they, you, we make better tips that way. And most people that are staying at these resorts tend to be, you know, have some money. So you tend to have kind of the upper end of the income bracket, which those people, if you make them smile and laugh, they tend to tip you pretty well. And to go along with that are like golf courses. So just regular golf courses. And some of these can just be like tiny muni executive courses. And they just have like kind of a beer cart. Um, I mean, you could technically maybe get a job as a beer cart driver person and, and I would put that on my resume as, as bartending experience. I mean, you're, you're selling a beer, you're cracking it, you're giving it to them. It's like, hey, you know, technicality, but that's technically bartending. But some of these places, same thing as like resorts. They have, some of them have bigger clubhouses that have a bunch of nice booze. Again, that's expensive. And again, your, your clientele tends to be in the higher income brackets. So they will tip well, hopefully. And if you're a golfer too, then you get perks in that regard. Now the next one is casinos. Now casinos are something that will, again, depend on where you are in the country. Some casinos I know aren't allowed in certain cities or states. And if there's any sort of casinos nearby, that's a good option as well. And this is another one that tends to be a little bit lower. Like if it's a, if it's a small kind of casino, then they're not gonna be super busy. So it's again, one of these places that's gonna have kind of a lower experience requirement for you. But some of these can be great, right? So if we zoom into the Vegas world, casino bars, these are some of the holy grail of bartending positions. And it's more, not necessarily their basic bars. I mean, all their bars do pretty well, but it's like their nightclubs. And if you do live in the Vegas area, what you can do is start in some of the basic bars of the casino and then you will obviously be looking to make the right connections with the right people and trying to move up into their nightclub. Next thing we have are the convention and trade show centers. So if you have a convention center in your town or your city, then they do big events and they'll tend to staff out bars for those conventions. Or they'll have like kind of VIP rooms where they'll have a bartender or the organizers or the presenters at the convention and they'll need staff for those places. So convention centers are a good option. And along those similar lines are music and like concert venues. So if you live in a place where they do concerts on a regular basis or like they have a concert arena, right? Or even like sports arenas in your area, they'll have little bars around the outside that you can work. They're just usually real basic bartending. You know, they don't usually have a whole lot of, of work experience requirements for those places. And to relate to the sports stuff are professional sports teams. So if you have like a professional sports team in your town, same thing. They have all the beer and bar carts around the outside of the venue. And that's a usually pretty basic bartending gig, but it's busy so you can make some decent money. So those are kind of the main ones. Now here's some kind of other random ideas. You can do bowling alleys, which are usually pretty basic, airports. Airports are actually pretty good and they, they can be, depending on how they're set up, you can get, you know, you, you can get pretty good benefits from working at an airport, but airports are awesome because people are, you're turning people over or people are drinking a lot, right? They're either coming in, trying to grab a drink and a shot before they get their flight. So they just come in, pound a drink, tip you and they're out. Or people are killing a layover. So they're just sitting there just sucking them back or they're scared to fly. So they come in and they pound a bunch of shots or drinks or whatever before they get on an airplane. So all those scenarios are lots of drinks being consumed. A lot of these places have food, so you can buffer, um, you can boost out your tabs that way with food. So airports are a great option. This one's cool if you like to travel and you live somewhere that has a major port is cruise ships. So cruise ships, they tend to be seasonal, so you'll have to look at each of the cruise ships individually. Like if you live close to a port and look up what cruise ships come through and then they have specific hiring job fairs and stuff. I, I've, I've never done it. I don't have any friends that, I don't know anybody directly who has worked on a cruise ship. So I don't know exactly the process, but I do know that there are a lot of seasonal people that work on cruise ships. And it's cool because you get to travel around a bit. You work with a very kind of diverse staff. It tends to have kind of a, a broad international staff on cruise ships and you know party people people are just on cruise ships partying it up so it's that's a fun option and something to think about if you are in the right area geographically where you have 
a port nearby. Another random idea is like racetrack. So if you like horse racing or dog racing, then those, those places uh, usually are seasonal as well, but they'll hire up staff. And again, it tends to be pretty basic bartending so it doesn't have a huge experience requirement. And then you can find random stuff online. So you're not really gonna go to like monster.com or some of the more traditional, you know, employment platforms. Craigslist tends to be kind of the main one, but don't just go to Craigslist, right? Because that's sort of what every lazy bartender does. They just sit at home and they look at Craigslist. You're gonna minimize your options for all these types of places because most places don't advertise. And then you're gonna maximize your competition. And if they do huge cattle calls, like, hey, we're hiring, if like, like a cool bar in town is hiring, show up on at Tuesday between two and four, if you're in a big area, there'll be a lot of people. Like in San Diego, something like that. I went to the House of Blues, did an opening, open hiring job fair for bartenders when they opened um, down in downtown San Diego. This was a long time ago. This is very, very early in my bartending career, but I went down there anyway and gave it a shot. I didn't get hired, obviously, but there was literally 500 people that were trying to apply for like 20 jobs. So again, use Craigslist to see who is hiring, but don't just use Craigslist. And I have a, a, a post on the Bartending Blueprint blog that I'll put a link to hopefully up here um, or in the description. And it, it talks about like, what are some of the better platforms to use online to try to find some jobs. So make sure you go read that and check that one out. This is a good list to get started. Build out your list, try to have at least 30, preferably closer to 50. And if you live in a major metropolitan area, I want you to build a list of 100 places long. Then I want you to go in there and I want you to apply. You know, watch the other videos that are gonna be coming up um, in the next episode or two that are gonna be talking about resumes. So wait for those to come out and I'll give you a cool little template and how to fill it out take your cool little resume in there and then just start building relationships. So you need to go to these places. The first couple of weeks is gonna be pretty intense because you need to go in there, drop off a resume, shake somebody's hand, nice to know you, I'm interested in working here, on your, your entire list. And then I want you to follow up once a week with every single one of these places for the first couple of weeks. And then after that, cut back to once every couple of weeks every two or three weeks and then never less than once a month and do this until you get hired and it generally won't take very long if you actually do that I guarantee that you will even if you don't have a lot of experience will show ambition that will be very valuable to them and is 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 something that will make you stand out from your competition because most people don't do this take this system and work it because it works if you work it so I think that's it for this episode. Like I said, the rest of these will be coming out hopefully in short succession. I won't make you, I, I won't make you wait a week until the next episode comes out. So if you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. If you're an, uh, an experienced bartender and you have some other cool ideas, then please leave those down below as, as people will benefit from that knowledge as well. If you're a new viewer, think about subscribing so you can get notifications anytime I have new episodes coming out. And if you're already a loyal viewer, then think about please supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash bartending pro. Okay, that's it for this episode. I'll see you soon with the next one in this series. I'm Jason, and this is making you a bartending pro. Cheers.